Good afternoon and uh, buonasera a tutti. For those of you who are following from uh, Italy, I am Francesca Casazza, the Executive Director of the Italian Cultural Society, and I have the pleasure today to welcome you to our first event of 2022. Renato Miracco will present his book, Oscar Wilde's Italian Dream, 1875-1900. We are back on Zoom. The silver lining is that many of you from uh, many parts of the world can be connected. And uh, we are glad today that we are connected with the uh, Università di Bologna, and in particular with uh, Professor Gino Scatasta, who is here on the screen. Professor uh, Gino Scatasta teaches English literature and Anglophone media culture at the University of Bologna. He has written on Irish, and Victorian literature, in particular Charles Dickens and Oscar Wilde. His uh, most recent monograph is uh, Fitzrovia o la Bohème a Londra on London's Bohemian scene from 1850 to 1950. He has uh, also worked on comics, uh, pop culture, and English culture in the 1960s. He's president of the Italian Oscar Wilde Society. Benvenuto, professore, and thank you for being uh, with us tonight. Thank you for, thank you. And, uh, and you also see Professor Laura Benedetti from uh, Georgetown University, where she is the Laura Gaetano de Sole Professorship of Contemporary Italian Culture. She is uh, the recipient of uh, several recognitions and fellowship. Her impressive biography includes uh, publications and articles covering 700 years, from uh, Boccaccio to Elena Ferrante. Uh, she's also the author of uh, several volumes, including The Tigers in the Snow, Motherhood and Literature in 20th Century Italy, that was the winner of uh, the Flaviano International Prize. Recently, she published Da Venezia al Cairo, Il Viaggio di Zaccaria Pagani nel Primo Cinquecento, which we will present uh, next month, probably, <laughs> at the Italian Cultural Society. So stay tuned. <laughs> Um, Laura Benedetti also wrote uh, two novels, Un Paese di Carta and uh, Secondo Piano. Thank you, Laura, for being uh, again with the Italian Cultural Society and uh, other, our audience. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And finally, many of you already know Renato Miracco, curator and critic who, who served as a cultural attaché at the Italian Embassy in Washington, D.C and uh, as advisor to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Italy. He was awarded the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic for Cultural Achievement in 2018. He has uh, curated major exhibitions uh, with Tate Modern in London, Metropolitan Museum in New York, uh, and London Historic Collection, and in Washington DC at the Philip Collections and National Gallery, among others. He's, um, Passion for Oscar Wilde uh, dates from the early 1980s when uh, he wrote his first uh, um, essay on Wilde stays in Italy, um, titled Verso il Sole, Cronaca del Soggiorno Napoletano, published uh, by Colonese in 1981. Renato, grazie di essere di nuovo con noi. Ora ti cedo la parola. I will turn it over to you so you can uh, illustrate uh, this uh, work, this recent book that uh, um, has uh, the material that you found uh, recently after your first uh, edition, right? After your yeah. first uh, uh, publishing. Um, is that correct? No, correct, totally correct. And uh, what would I say? Thank you for hosting me and thank you uh, to all of you, you will just accept just to, to be with me this morning in this Sunday, really freezing Sunday here in, in Pennsylvania. I'm in Pennsylvania right now. My, I think it's, it's not different in, in Washington with Laura. Thank you, Laura, for being here. And Gino, thank you so much. Uh, in Italy, this is a time for dinner. It's not a time for a talk. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to be here. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, uh, that, that you proposed to me, I was really shy. I was no, 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 no. And then uh, um, I decided, yes, thank you so much because this is this is presentation will follow a lot of presentation that I did about Oscar Wilde. Uh, this book was published just um, one year ago. By, I, I suppose just to have a long tour all over Europe and London, Ireland, wherever, Paris, wherever, Brussels. 
and then uh, COVID uh, issue, I reduced only to do just an online presentation and not the visual one. I hope that uh, my my book will be. Um, it's not it's not a, a simple book, so it, it, you can read the next year. You can you can read in the next ten years or twenty years or wherever. So it's not never update and never old. Uh, um, and was it was really 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 a big honor. Just was named the best uh, among the best ten books about Oscar Wilde. Um, I'm really humble. I'm an art historian. I'm not a lit, 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 English literature major. So, so forgive me, Laura. Forgive me, Gino, for if I made some mistake. And you can correct me like a, a, a bad student and um, whatever you want. And uh, I would like just to say hello to all the audience. I don't know how many you are. I would like just to extend a um, a welcome to my American family uh, who just uh, send me a text to say, I will be here, I'll be here watching you. Watch, okay, so I, I hope that you will not be ashamed just to be connected with me um, uh, as well. Uh, the first question uh, was, uh, okay, this is a book about Oscar Wilde. Why we have to take care of Oscar Wilde, this old, old, old figure, old, uh, uh, writer, why we have to again to write again to Oscar Wilde. I, as, as Francesca mentioned before, I just wrote a, a little pamphlet, a little essay about Oscar Wilde when I was living between Paris and London. And so, um, and I, I, I was just at the library in London, uh, uh, La Reserve de la, de la Bibliothèque Nationale. Um, and then I was in London and just I found so many letters from Oscar Wilde from Naples. So uh, I, I, okay, I was born uh, October 15, so give me uh, uh, happy birthday, October 15. Uh, Oscar was, was born in October 16. And so I don't know, I don't know why, or maybe I just uh, uh, I don't know why at that time, why I, I was so connected with him emotionally. And so I decided just to publish this, this little book about his uh, trip to Italy. But uh, then I said, okay, went really well, four edition, blah, 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 blah. A, a lot of compliments, a lot of, of review all over the world, whatever. Uh, but day by day, I was, uh, um, every time, so as I say, I'm an art historian, so I used just to, to write books on, or, or article about artists, uh, about exhibition, I did more than, I don't know, 82 exhibition all over the world. So uh, it's not that, but always, always, always was just um, a, a voice of Oscar Wilde was in, in my mind. I don't know, um, can I say something? Can I say something? And it was just the last sentences he, he, he told to the jury when he was condemned for two years uh, in prison. Can I say something? Can I say something? Can I say okay, okay, what do you want to say? Why you want to say? And then I was really uh, surprised when I saw this uh, exhibition at the, the uh, Reading Pre Prison in London. Uh, where, uh, as I said, um, it was for two years. Um, contemporary artists like uh, um, Steve McQueen, uh, uh, Nan Golin, uh, I way, way, um, give him an homage to the, to the man who changed our life and changed our life in this prison. So I say, okay, maybe you are right, Oscar. Maybe I, I have to follow your advice. Maybe you, I, I have to, <laughs> to, to, uh, to research more about yourself. And then was this beautiful exhibition in, in 2017 or Petit Palais, uh, in, in, Petit Palais in, in, in Paris, the name was uh, Oscar Wilde, uh, L'Impertinent Absolu. Um, it was about him. And then there was another one in London, at Tate Modern. I was in London for a, a few times and a few years, so many times it was, uh, I was a guest curator at Tate Modern. Anyway, Tate Modern did an exhibition about queer uh, British art 
1861-1967. So, and now I, I see why we are talking now about Oscar Wilde. It's about his writing, it's about his comedy, it's about his letters to um, Arthur Douglas, it's about uh, the profundis, it's about uh, what is about why this man is still contemporary, why he is now an icon, why we have so many Oscar Wilde society uh, um, circle all over the world. Tell me why. And then you, Gino, you have to answer these questions and give me some numbers as well. Why? And, and then I say, okay, is important as, an, as a writer, he was important. Um, his comedy was really funny, his witty, uh, witty sentences, blah, blah. But uh, what I discovered uh, day by day was um, it was important uh, as a, a manifest of an artist between Victorian and New World. A still contemporary right now in in 21 century. It's really contemporary right now. It continued to tell us something. It continued to be just a, 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 an icon, a reference icon. And that is really something that I discover and I would like just to share with you right now. Um, and then another thing, and, and, and you are teaching, I was teaching only for a short, short time and then I, I'm teaching two years ago before the COVID. But maybe Laura and Gino can, can, can say a word about this. Uh, teaching is also uh, preserving of memory. So it's something that uh, we have to be able to transmit to the young generation the right memory. So many times uh, there are so many input outside, image outside that we cannot, um, we are just overwhelmed by so many, so many messages. We have to be able to transmit to the young generation. And, and, and I say, as an old man, um, I say, okay, we, you have the duty to, to write something and to put uh, much more in his context, uh, Oscar Wilde. This is the, the first uh, idea that I had on, uh, on, on Oscar Wilde. And, it, and this was something that I was carrying, carrying, carrying all, the, all, all this year because I'm, it's, it, took, uh, it took more than four years to write and to do research on, on, on Oscar Wilde based on uh, uh, new letters, new uh, um, article in this paper in the little book about his contemporaries and later on, um, we discover so many interviews to him after he died because so many uh, writers and journalists were, were really, really scared to expose themselves to, uh, to be a friend or to be in contact or to touch uh, Oscar Wilde uh, in, in their life. So it, it is just a, um, a leper. I don't know, I, what, what was, re was really confusing uh, uh, at the time of his life. So um, this is why I start to research and I start just to, uh, um, what is the meaning of Oscar Wilde now? Why so many publicity or or uh, um, sentences that he, that he made, that he created, he, he was telling, uh, are continue to be to be funny or to be meaningful for us. That's it's exactly what I what I I, I would like just to explore uh, with this book. So I would to say thank you to Damiani, who is just the publisher for the English uh, um, in, in English and American. Uh, uh, edition, I have to say thank you to Colonies and Friends. The first book I, pub I published was with Colonies and now it's with Colonies and Friends. And uh, um, I have to say thank you to them. They've given me just the opportunity to write uh, a rewrite 
so you can have this book, you can have it in English and you can have an Italian. I brought in English, uh, um, but uh, I translate as, as well in Italian. Um, I, I had a lot of help in, 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 in correcting my, 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 uh, my English wherever. Uh, uh, my husband uh, helped me a lot. Um, and um, thank you. Um, and so I say, okay, let us, let, us, let us figure out how we can build up this new chapter of, uh, of Oscar Wilde in his life. And I was really, really lucky. I, 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 I don't know why I was, I was so lucky because for example, uh, the grand grandson, uh, uh, Marilyn Holland uh, say, oh, Renato, you found such incredible material, wow. Um, and uh, it, it's really, I didn't know about this. He was his grand grandson. Uh, who, by the way, didn't change his, his surname with uh, Wild, but he still had uh, his surname is Holland, the name that the Costans, uh, the wife of Holland, uh, gave to him after uh, Oscar Wilde was in prison. Um, and then I say, okay, he wants to live in, uh, in Italy. He wants to be here, why? So came in my mind, say, why was this huge fascination, fascination of Italy at that time? What does it mean, Italy? And then you have to uh, uh, understand, and, uh, starting from 1860, uh, Thomas Cook, Thomas Cook, <laughs> everybody knows about him. Um, uh, build up just uh, a, a communication about Italy. So, and uh, so many English, French, German, but most English people and German people and all over the world, American people came to the south of Italy. And for the, the uh, uh, society at that time, it was really trendy to spend uh, time in, in between Rome Naples and Sicily, Easter in Rome because there is the Pope, uh, Naples because it was a San Carlo, San Carlo is named just the Coven uh, Garden, Italian Coven Garden uh, in, uh, in, um, in Naples we have. Sicily because Sicily was the much more the Mediterranean feeling. And then Mediterranean feeling, what does it mean? A feeling this, the uh, the nest of the culture, the Greek and Roman culture, but also, and that wasn't just in, a, a, in what we can call right now a gay guide at that moment, uh, was a, a, a place where you can have a boyfriend or without, without so many uh, issues, so many uh, problems that you maybe you have in London, but, uh, we will see now or later, and uh, uh, we will see how the, the society in, in, uh, in, in London was accustomed to have a gay life. So after uh, this idea of, uh, okay, okay, this is, oh, oh, thank you, Dario. Thank you, remind me that we have images. Uh, I'm sorry, I am not the only images in this in the, in, in, in today. Um, just to give you a, a little bit of background, on the left we have um, uh, Robert Ross in 1911. Robert Ross was a lover of, New York, uh, of Oscar Wilde, um, a young lover, but when he was in prison, was the, uh, the only person who gave him money. And he, was, he, uh, he bought all the rights of Oscar Wilde when Oscar Wilde was just uh, obliged to sell it and he, when he went to the prison. Uh, on the right, we have just an image on 1893, um, Douglas who is uh, 22 years old and Oscar Wilde. Go ahead. Thank you, Dario. Thank you. Um, this is where we're talking about the, the, the fascination of, uh, uh, of a young boy in, uh, in, um, uh, in Italy, in the south of Italy. Uh, there are so many writers who wrote, I, I really love 
the um, Italian male. Uh, I was in love with them. And this is the rare uh, images of Georgia Sommer, uh, Sicily, because I, do, um, I don't know if you know, uh, at that time was just a, a famous poem about uh, Theodore uh, Retislow who was on the Sicilian boy, I would say, was the first one who was just an underline how uh, the male figure, the male body was uh, um, so sexy uh, at that time. I'll go ahead. Um, and here we are, we, we have Oscar Wilde in a costume in Greece. Uh, he went in Greece, was, was really, really young. And this is start to uh, add some uh, um, phone bladed um, um, photograph. Some of them, uh, uh, William Fungleden gave directly to Wild. The Wild went uh, um, for sure three times, maybe four times. One with uh, Douglas, who was his lover, and, uh, um, and some, some other times alone. Um, and he gave personally uh, Fungleden to him this photograph that we can, uh, we have just, we were able just to reproduce in this catalog. It was not easy. Uh, Von Gledos doesn't have any right, um, any heirs or wherever. So um, it's really complicated to have the rights to publish uh, the, some photograph. And this is why we don't, we don't have any uh, online uh, uh, book. Uh, about Oscar Wilde right now. This is not online. You have only to, to buy an, in, in, in an art copy in, in paper. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so before, let, let, let me focus, before this, this image, let me focus on um, um, August von Platon uh, wrote about the south of Italy. Um, and so, what I really would like just to do, I don't know if you are familiar with the biography of Oscar Wilde. Um, Oscar Wilde was a, 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 a famous writer, a writer of comedy, he was really famous. And then he was engaged, uh, uh, as I said, with the Lord, Lord Alfred with Douglas, who was his lover. Um, and his father uh, sued or just send a message to Oscar Wilde saying, stop to sing my, my boy, you are just pervert. You cannot uh, stay with him and everybody has to be ashamed to be in your circle. And Oscar Wilde, instead of uh, saying no, okay, who cares? I, I, I continue to, to, be, to, to follow my life and I don't care about you. Uh, he, um, send another message, no, it's not true. And this is, it, then we start just a three process, three trails against Oscar Wilde. So um, coming back about the fascination of Italy, I would like just to, uh, I recuperate the first letters that Oscar Wilde wrote to uh, his family when he was only uh, 17, and when he went to Italy uh, for the first time. And he wrote so many poems uh, he, um, about the Italian landscape uh, in, uh, in, during this year and later. After the prison, um, before going, sorry, before going to prison, um, he had so many meetings with André Gide. And André Gide say, um, why? Um, what, what you would like to do? You know, I, I, I saw that you have, a, you have just dispute with, with the father of Lord Douglas. Why you have, um, stop it, don't worry, or whatever, go to Paris. He was back and forth uh, with Paris and London. Uh, go to London, go, go to Paris and stay there. Uh, let us wait a, a few months and then you come back without any, 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 any any problem? And he say, no, uh, I would like just to follow my path. And this is, was exactly the, the switch moment. When he decide to follow the, uh, the, uh, the trial, 
uh, when he was accused of two years in prison, uh, the court gave him um, 24 hours to escape to Paris. And he didn't do. He said, no, I would like just to follow my path. I would like to see what's going on. I, in, in my early age, I, I wrote, and, and maybe you, you, are, you can be scandalized about what I, I wrote. I wrote an essay about Oscar Wilde Genet, the idea of to feel in your body uh, the pain that you have, the feeling in your body, the, the result of your act, it's really something really in the 20th century is much more Genet and a Sartre. I, I, I was starting this, this essay about starting from an essay uh, of uh, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, who, who was the first one who put uh, both together. And it was, it was uh, I, I was only to quote you this, uh, uh, exactly what, what he said, what he said uh, to, to uh, uh, André Gide and to his friend, just to justify his action, not to go away, but to go to prison. Uh, the artist must live the complete life. Uh, and uh, um, I had, uh, I've, I've had a great success. I've had a great failure. Um, I've learned the value of each. Why should I complain? I have at last came for the complex life which every artist must experience in order to join beauty in trust. So this idea of beauty, this idea of hell <laughs> is connected with beauty was something really, really that he was following all his life. This idea of Protestantism, this idea of to be Catholic, Catholic, it's, it's really something that's in his mind. Um, um, coming back to this photo, um, when, so after, after a, a few months, he was in Dieppe in, in, in France when, when he got out from the prison, he decided just to, to come to um, uh, uh, Italy, Naples. And after Naples, he decided just to go to Capri when he was totally rejected from everybody. Uh, they kick him off of the hotel, Quisisana, and uh, but this is these are two old uh, 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 photo of Capri. Uh, getting to Capri um, was not easy. The, the images that I put inside here is also to to um, let the people, the reader, un understand. Uh, a, a man well dressed in white suit or with a hat, dealing with all these people. And these two women that, that you see here, they jump on him to take his uh, luggage and, and bring them to Anna Capri or to Capri by the stairs. Uh, so you, you have to figure out, and, and there is some quote inside the, the, uh, uh, the book about how difficult it was to reach Capri and uh, what kind of people he met in Capri as well. Um, uh, let's go ahead, sorry. These are uh, uh, again a portrait of uh, uh, um, von Gluden uh, that he gave to him um, in 1898, in 1900, uh, uh, when exactly um, Oscar Wilde died. Go ahead. Oh, this is an old one. This is a, a the. Uh, um, this is incredible. This is a, a London. Uh, in London, sorry, this is in London. But this is a, a, um, Capri, when all the people um, used just to go in the Grotta Azzurra. Uh, the the uh, blue cave and um, grotto of Capri, blue grotto of Capri, as they, they say at that time. Go ahead, thank you. Okay, we have all always to see the the, the where the, all these images came 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 from. 
And Doc is also a, a I decide just to uh, give uh, to the public a, a little bit of background. Background means uh, how was the reality? How was the the uh, uh, reality of gay life at that time? Uh, it was really difficult just to trace um, uh, the um, some uh, some numbers because. Uh, gay men, lesbian men, crazy men were put all together uh, in, in, in the same box. So you can find the same box uh, um, a report about lesbian, gay men, transgender, uh, 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 transvestite people at that time, and, and crazy people, mad people, suicide, homicide, all together. They are all bad people at that, at that, at that moment. So this is this is so how to pick the right uh, uh, um, cases? Just to, to give just as a, a statistic it was really really uh, um, difficult. Um, so and and then after studying this, which is the the um, gay life in London at that time, and I was difficult. Uh, to have the uh, friend, uh, the how difficult, uh, how different was the gay life in in Paris. Uh, you can see uh, how uh, Oscar Wilde was dealing between two worlds, and then he decided just to get married. He decided to have two kids. Uh, so the idea of identity was really something really difficult for him. Uh, the idea of identity merge uh, in his life. And uh, um, so when, then I, I, after this, I say, why uh, the, in, the English society decide to put him in a jail? Because at that time, there were so many gay cases at, at that time, that was really incredible. But why him? Why? And um, there are so many uh, cases. One, one related with the with the the the, um, the, mm, the nephew of the queen. So he, he he was involved in some gay uh, issue in London that time. So I was discovering all these uh, um, hidden. Uh, cases of uh, uh, gay life and gay process against gay men. But why Oscar Wilde? Oscar Wilde was just an example. And then the Tory, uh, Tory part uh, uh, um, took, took uh, uh, the, the, the government at that time. And they would, would, they would like just to give an example for everybody in, to just a much more moral what they call moral life um, in that time. So he decided, I, I will be really brief because I really would like just to, to, to give you the opportunity to, to talk. Um, and then he came to Naples. And why Naples? As I said, Naples was the, the, the capital of uh, um, joyful life, beautiful weather, if you have some health problem, the sea, bathing in the sea, you will solve everything. And uh, um, music, concert, uh, performance, theater, uh, life, there were a lot of uh, 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 beautiful hotel, uh, Britannic, uh, Hotel du Londres, uh, <laughs> all this, this, this idea. And so he decided just to, to came uh, to uh, uh, Naples and decided that I would like just to write here in Naples. I would like just to, to, to do more. And he was finishing the, the, the performance, the, the, ballad, the ballad of reading, and then he was touching a little bit of the performance. Um, and then the culture society in Naples was totally against him. In, uh, Matilde Serrao in the Mattino wrote really a bad article about him. Uh, uh, all it was, nobody wants to see him. 
he had a lot of interview with, with journalists and the journalists were against him or would like just to prove, look, this man, how, how he was just famous one and well, look at him right now. Uh, two or three journalists at that time were really kind with him and say, okay, um, and, and, but all this interview came really late in the, uh, after uh, Oscar Wilde died. One of, of this was um, Arnaldo de Liz, who just wrote a book about um, life between men and women. Uh, it was just, as we say, in a closet. Um, so, um, and Oscar Wilde, every single time, wants to uh, have his comedy, have, have his, the Salome, somebody, a translator, um, translated the Salome from French to English, English to Italian, to be just performed in a theater in, in, uh, in Naples. They did just a, a public, um, semi-public uh, reading uh, in Circo della, Circo della, della Caccia, hunting a circle in Naples. And then, um, but they really didn't want to, to have any uh, relationship with him. So he went to Sicily, he went to Genova, he went to you know, stay in Rome, uh, Sicily again, and came back to Paris until uh, after uh, uh, three years he died. Um, all of this, and I'm I really, I, I really waiting for your question, so we would like just to go uh, deeply and deeply in some aspect. Um, I really would like just to say, uh, this is really incredible material. I, as I said, I was really, really lucky to find it. And I was really, really, um, um, I, I don't know how to say, when, when uh, Edmund White uh, was, uh, uh, was reading the book, said, Renato, you give him so much credit and you discover so much uh, material and give him some hope, some joy, some pain then nobody knows about him. And uh, that, that, was, uh, that was really, really uh, incredible. And an article in, in, in London when they say they please me to say, oh, and the, the nephew say, okay, you found really incredible stuff. And um, I, they, I didn't know. So um, I stopped by here and I, I, I want only to, to to reply to your questions. And then I really would like just, uh, if some people will put me questions, please don't be afraid or don't be shy. Um, I'm here to answer. I, it's really, I, I can talk for hours about Oscar Wilde, as you can see now. And, um, and so my, I don't want to bother you because it's a Sunday evening in Italy. It's a Sunday afternoon in, in Washington, DC, uh, and in, in Washington, DC area in Pennsylvania, where I live right now. So I, I give the word to you, I, give a, I pass the floor to you. Thank you, thank you Renato for your presentation and for your book that provides such a fascinating overview of Oscar Wilde's relationship with Italy and, and much more I would say. I, I'll start this conversation, but please, as you said, let's make it a conversation in spite of the webinar format. So please, I would like to invite uh, all of you, everybody who's watching to submit uh, questions through the Q&A function in Zoom so that uh, Francesca can retrieve your question, uh, questions and ask them to, to Renato. Uh, so, you know, you have, you have given us so, so many things to, to think about, uh, you know, uh -huh. Oscar Wilde's uh, fascination with Italy, the idea that Italy, that Southern Italy in particular, would provide and, uh, a, a more congenial environment, right? Uh, you write in your book, that Naples was perceived as an area, a quote from your book, where the difference between the sexes had delicate and malleable border areas. Yes. So Oscar Wilde wanted to find not only a better climate, as he, as he writes in his letters, but also a more congenial environment. And I was also fascinated by the, the legal uh, aspect of this issue that, that you mentioned. You mentioned how yeah. up to the unification, laws uh, about homosexuality, of course, were left up to the individual states in Italy, but then after the unification, it was the, the Sardinian, uh, the, the penal code of the uh, kingdom of Sardinia that uh, 
prescribed actual, uh, actually imprisonment for uh, uh, acts of lust against nature, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but you also say that uh, this uh, this provision was met with some resistance in in the south, and yeah. this, uh, yeah. And but also uh, then uh, uh, you also mentioned, and I would like you to elaborate a little bit more about this, perhaps that this idea of uh, uh, Southern Italy as a more tolerant, permissive uh, place, perhaps did not completely live up to Wilde's expectations. So the, 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 it, it, the society was not as welcoming as he had hoped. He's mine, absolutely not, absolutely not. First of all, thank you, Laura, uh, to point out this one. First of all, we have to understand that the, uh, the French re uh, re Revolution just uh, um, decr decriminalized the gay relationship. French Revolution, so <laughs> can you imagine? Napoleon just underlined this. And when, uh, before the uh, uh, unification of Italy, there were so many uh, issues about, as you say, Sardinia one, the Pope, the Pope, if you, if, if you had just a, a, a sex relationship with a man uh, in the Vatican all around the area, you would be in prison for all your life long. Uh, in, uh, in Florence was totally different. In the North, much more the uh, Austrian uh, 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 law was against uh, the, the gay man. In the South, in the um, South is as this magic uh, area around, um, starting from um, the English people thought in Oxford, Oxford started to um, talk about uh, Greek love in 1850 uh, in the school, Oxford. So all these students, immediately say, okay, it's, it's, not a big, it's not a big issue to have just a, a gay story with my best friend. And, uh, and Oscar Wilde as well, as so many gay friends, gay uh, uh, bro romance <laughs> to say, uh, in, in his life uh, during, during the university. And so all this magical idea uh, when in Sicily, where everything was really permitted, was really easy. And then they, they, didn't, they didn't see this society, this heavy Victorian uh, conservative society in the south of Italy that he met in Palermo and he met in Naples. No one noble people accept him and Lord Douglas in their house at that moment. It was really incredible because it was a really a close English community in, 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 in Naples. And this community say no to them. When they enter in Vitisana, all the English people in this hotel is really expensive hotel say, or them, or uh, 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 we stay. So the owner of the, the, the uh, hotel say, please go away. Axel Munt, who has a beautiful house, uh, say, okay, come and stay with me for a, a couple of days. And then he, and they say, okay, um, they went to Hotel Pagano. There is some beautiful photo about Hotel Pagano in that, in that book as well. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's just a, a you know, it's images that you have in your mind and then the reality was so such a difference because why he moved to Naples? It, it, because he say, as you say, okay, I hear I can be calm, quiet. It's not expensive because the dream of English people that you can live in Italy for one year for only to having 300 pounds. So we're nothing. So I can live in Italy as a, a lord with 300 pounds in a year and was exactly the amount that Robert Ross gave to him or some other friends gave to him without the estate of Lord Douglas. So say, okay, I can live here. I can have a boyfriend apart from my lover, uh, uh, Lord Douglas. I can write, 
it's a really a well accepted society. So I stay here. I would like to live here. If wrote, I would like just to live here. And that's it's something that's just a, And then he realized, no, it's not this reality. This is not the reality. I had something. I, yeah. uh, one thing that is incredible is in the letters that Oscar Wilde wrote, and you have a lot of letters by Oscar Wilde. And uh, imagine how beautiful it was for a man who was in love with Greece to meet people whose name was Homer, young yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. The young beautiful boy whose name was Homer or Aeolo, the god yeah. of the winds. And yeah. imagine how, how strange and fascinating it would be. There's a this sense of, uh, of, um, of meeting the real thing, in a sense. That yeah, that exactly. There, there, there was a writer, I don't remember his name right now, who wrote Mediterraneo, Mediterranean. Every single simple word is just cha is changing my life, only to pronounce Mediterraneo, Mediterranean Sea. Only this one is, is changing. I'm reinvigorating. I'm, 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 ah, I can breathe in another way. It was like, unbelievable. And you can imagine no one artist, no one uh, a writer or sculptor or painter at that time was just too um, incomplete if he didn't go to Italy. <laughs> that time was unbelievable. It was, was, re was really, this was the, the huge fortune. And Thomas Cook, as I said at the beginning, built up just really a fortune selling trip to Italy <laughs> and south of Italy. <laughs> Well, something that I'd like to, to mention about your book is that it's very easy to follow, even for somebody like me. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely not, not a, an Oscar Wilde specialist. So it's a book that can appeal both to specialists, but also to the general public because of the way you uh, summarize uh, you know, relevant uh, episodes in his life uh, and uh, for the absolutely fascinating primary sources that you provide, the letters, the interviews, and, on, and so forth. Uh, and so perhaps for the, for the general public, a lesser known uh, trait of Oscar Wilde, the complete complex uh, personality is his activism, his commitment to the improvement of the condition of prisoners, right? There is in particular a letter that you include in the book that was published uh, uh, in the Daily Chronicle in 1898, right? So a, a public letter where you know, at this point, the, the experience of uh, the prison was behind him, so he could have just tried to forget everything and try to have everybody forget what had happened to him. But actually, he writes this very powerful letter describing the dismal state of uh, the British prisons. Talks about the constant hunger, sleep deprivation, inadequate, uh, inadequate sanitary uh, facilities, lack of social interactions, so it elapses these things with you know, great clarity and great courage, I would say. So my, my general question is, you know, what, what effect did the incarceration have on him, both at a personal and an artistic level? Yeah, um, two things, I will I just reply in order. So I wrote this book for general public, maybe who doesn't know anything about Oscar Wilde, uh, because in my mind, I, I wrote this book for my little grand, grandchildren, um, Ludovico and Eva. Uh, Eva wasn't born, <laughs> so Ludovico has only a few months. Uh, so I would say, okay, I would like just to, if some, he wants to write, he wants to read just something about Oscar Wilde, okay, I can read really simply just to give him a, a, a background. Uh, and you point out uh, another, uh, really beautiful uh, uh, issue about uh, Oscar Wilde. Um, he decided to be a testimony of what he was passing into the, the prison. And, and uh, they, uh, in English law, uh, decide to follow his advice. So all the, the uh, reform of prison after the letter that you mentioned, they, uh, they were following their uh, suggestion by Oscar Wilde. 
So the deprivation, the sleeping, the uh, interaction between 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 visitors and and and, uh, and person who are in who were in jail was incredible. And and he, he he wrote so many things about it, but not only that letters, he wrote three letters and he was able to to uh, say, okay, I'm here. If you need any suggestion, I'm here because I was living there. So I know exactly what you mean. In the book, there is a, I, 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 I found some, uh, uh, some images of a uh, uh, prisoner. Uh, the prisoner had only one hour of, of hair of outside in a, uh, um, walking the circle with a mask, with only your eyes. And then you have a mask, you couldn't be recognized. And it, it, it was terrible. It was just a, an, an iron mask that, you, that they have. And uh, uh, Oscar Wilde was talking with a young boy and he sent him money. And because they, 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 they saw this, they put just a, in, in a, an incredible, much more cruel uh, 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 part of the prison for uh, two weeks. So this force is personal and physical and mental. As a writer, there is a, this beautiful letter that he wrote to uh, Frank Harris say, okay, before getting into the prison, I, to describe beauty or to describe, thank you. I, at that time I, uh, I was in need of, word sentences so I have exactly I, I have to put all together now the only word thank you I reduce my my vocabulary my vocabulary is much more focused straight and this is the novelty of of this of, of, of this in the literature uh, um, field was incredible this letter was totally different from the first letters he wrote. The letters in Naples and after Naples and in Italy until he died, when he died in Paris, was totally different. Totally, totally different. And as, as, as he said, I was happy. And then I decide to have this. I decide to prove myself. I decide to taste myself. I decide to, I don't, to tease myself. I decide, I, I, I decide just to have on my body all these feelings and this changed me forever. Um, before he died, he met just a, a friend of his mom and he said, don't be, why don't you write beautiful as you did in the past? That was gone. That was totally gone. I'm a new one. So instead of crying, instead of say, oh, <laughs> sobbing, he says, I'm a new one. I'm a new man with new vocabulary, new feelings, and I'm happy. Okay, he was drinking a little bit more, but he was happy. We talk about Oscar Wilde. We should talk about Oscar Wilde's exactly. plural. Uh, because yeah. Oscar Wilde many times refashioned himself. Yes. Uh, for example, when he went to, to America in the beginning of the 80s, uh, uh, it was an estate. He came back with a different attitude and meeting, uh, meeting the Americans, meeting American society for him was, uh, was a great change. And, uh, and the same happened uh, with the comedies. He, he started to write comedies very late uh, in, in his life. That is, he started with the poem, poems, yeah. Yeah. Then he went on writing short stories. Then he wrote a novel. Then he wrote uh, plays in the nineties. So you have many different ways. And very difficult to to maybe we shouldn't do it uh, to attach to a single image of one. Yes. At the end, after the prison, exactly. after the prison, it was completely different. Yeah. And uh, it is not a problem of sincerity. He was always sincere. It, is, it was always yes, something exactly. true in him. But he changed it. This the idea of multiple personalities. Dorian Gray, there is a passage in Dorian Gray in which he, he, he works in London by night and he meets 
uh, many people and they say i want to to be uh, i want to change and become like all all these people this this idea of uh, of merging with people and changing but for example um, nothing was left because he wrote the solo man under socialism so he was committed also yes. before but that was not the in foreground in a sense no. that was in the background and then after the prison of course many many things became more uh, how can we say more uh, important for him more important for him and uh, and this, uh, of course the, uh, we, do, we don't know we cannot we cannot imagine what it means for 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 somebody like Oscar Wilde uh, to be in a Victorian prison at the end in the 90s. That is, was that was terrible. Hard labor, not uh, not uh, not just prison, hard labor. And uh, uh, he spent two years uh, uh, there. That probably uh, this would destroy every man of his uh, uh, of his uh, class, social class. But he survived. He survived uh, alas only for some years, not, not many years, but uh, that changed completely is, uh, is uh, again, again, as many times. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would like just to ask you how many Oscar Wilde Society are, are all over the world that you are, are um, aware of? Many, many. You, you, I, I know that I, instead of uh, answering uh, instead of asking you something, I should answer to your first question. That is, uh, uh, <laughs> no, we have so many. Of, I think there are in in, in England there are um, one, one is the, the Oscar Wilde Society in England, but I know that there are also some other societies, the nineties societies, for example. So there are many many societies in Italy. We started the. Uh, before uh, three years ago, the, the uh, Oscar, Italian Oscar Wilde Society, the idea was that uh, there was a problem with Oscar Wilde that his academy took him not very seriously, whereas the people, the readers, the general reader, took him too seriously. <laughs> that oh, was yeah, the yeah. Okay, okay. And and so um, was that for the academy, Oscar Wilde was just a funny writer. He wrote some plays, very funny but very superficial. The idea was that he was a superficial yeah. writer. That was the idea in it, the academy yeah, until, yeah. The, until the 80s. Yes, yes, yes. And even, whereas yes. For, for, for many people, uh, it was completely different for the common readers. They took him very seriously. And uh, so uh, Dorian Gray became a sort of a book, uh, a wonderful book. But Dorian Gray is uh, very funny in a sense. You can read it also with a different perspective, not only as a serious book. As I told you, the problem with Oscar Wilde is always shifting. Yes. It's changing under your eyes. You think that you understood him and you realize that you haven't understood him. The book of, of Renato, for example, says a lot about the last period of Oscar. And that was something that in the official biographies of Oscar Wilde was completely forgotten. Because yes. if you take Elman, for example, Elman has a very wonderful biography of Oscar Wilde, but the last part of the life of Oscar Wilde, just 20 pages. He died 20 in pages. Paris, wherever he was. Yeah, yeah. Of, of course, he, was, he, died, uh, he died, so um, he was dying, so probably had no time to finish. But the fact is that the most important biography ended very soon without uh, giving us many information. And this is the importance of this book is that it certainly gives a lot of things to, to think about, letters, uh, but also the articles and the reception in Italy that was very important. I see that probably Francesca has something to tell us. <laughs> yes, you. <I'm> mute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are a few questions from the audience. Uh, one uh, lady is asking, Asking, uh, did Wild speak Italian and did he know Proust? Oh yeah! Oh, too. I'm ready. I have studied. I've studied. Yes, don't worry. <laughs> he he was talking uh, Italian. He was talking uh, Neapolitan. He had a lesson with uh, a young boy, uh, and he was talking and writing. Said, you know what? Now I can talk not only in English. Now I can talk in my mixed of Neapolitan and Italian languages. Everybody is aware of this. And uh, I'm just, so I can be in contact with the real uh, common people here in Naples 
here in Italy. It was amazing. And the second question, yes, they met so many uh, times, uh, particularly one when uh, uh, um, Proust invited a wild in his house and it was late and, uh, and a wild uh, um, was waiting, waiting. And then um, as soon as Proust arrives, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And say, um, uh, wild say, may I go to the bathroom, please? He say, okay, it's there, you can see. And then we come back, we, we can shut. And he, 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 he never came, he didn't want to come back. And so Proust went and knocked the door of Oscar Wilde and say, oh, okay, it's, everything is okay. Yes, 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 but I don't want to see your horrible furniture or paintings or wherever in your house. So please let us meet in another place, not in this horrible house. <laughs> There was a problem with, with uh, I may add something. There was a problem with many British people or travelers in general in Italy in the 19th yeah. century. That is probably the reason why so many stereotypes about Italian people uh, survived for decades and decades. That is, they didn't talk, they didn't speak Italian. So they, uh, they have no direct relationship with Italian, but uh, they um, only, um, were surrounded by other travelers. So they were not direct because they didn't speak Italian. They have no, okay, it was impossible for them to communicate directly. Uh, well, people like Oscar Wilde or people who went in Italy also for, I can say for sexual reasons, uh, they had a direct exchange with the, the with Italian people. That was the, the problem. And <laughs> of course, Oscar so Wilde, uh, yeah, so uh, that, that was important. That was also the reason why it wasn't, uh, uh, was important that he, can, he could speak Italian because uh, it was a, he, he could have a direct contact with, uh, the direct relationship with Italian people. Yeah, it was incredible. It was, it was taking lesson <laughs> of Neapolitan Italian. Neapolitan Italian. <laughs> And then we have uh, Mauro who is uh, saying, uh, thanks for the interesting discussion. I have a question. Nowadays, the idea that English an English artist could go to Southern Italy to find more openness, sexual freedom and artistic inspiration would sound unbelievable, given where Southern Italy and England are in 2022. What do you think has happened in the last hundred, over hundred years uh, that has made England a to-go country for artists and Southern Italy a place where art is not as appreciated? Oh, um, no, Mauro, I don't know, I, I'll give you my email and my telephone number, which is, this, this discussion will be, take a lot of time, we, I don't know if we have, how many times we have. Uh, this is a, a, a good, uh, really good issue. Um, this is came also about either how Italy uh, was defending his art uh, in the last 100 years, how Italy was uh, uh, confronting and was uh, dealing with artists. Uh, Italy for a long, long, long time was out of the radar uh, uh, of art. Uh, instead England and promoting art and promoting artists and giving them money uh, with, uh, they are competing with uh, Paris with French. Uh, so many times, so the, the idea is from Italy, people uh, used just to go to uh, London first and London is go to Italy. But uh, starting from 1855, uh, Italian artists will go to Paris for the Grand Saloon or the Grand Opportunity as a, a, a beautiful fair, international fair, London. And I, I am aware of this because I, my next project is a, it's about an exhibition about Denitis in that year. And with Degas, Manet and Cayabot and Denitis wants from the south of Italy, from Puglia, wants to go to Rome, but not, Rome was not enough. He, he wants to go to England and he wants to go to Paris. He didn't, and no one of the artists, uh, apart from Corot, 
who was doing this grand tour in Italy wants to go in the south of Italy. Only in the, uh, the grand tour was the last moment with Italy was really famous with some uh, a foreign uh, artist uh, used to go in the south. But this is a really long uh, discussion. You can ask to Francesca to give me my mail. I would reply, I would more than happy to reply much more deeply. Okay, and uh, so here in the q and I don't see anything else except another question. Did Oscar Wise speak Italian? Yes, we already answered that. Uh, professors, do you wanna add something? Uh, some other questions? Buy the book in Italian and in English. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our website has uh, many, uh, well, a few um, links to buy the book in Italian and in English. So uh, um, both uh, the links to the publisher. Yeah, you, you can write to me directly and say, so I can answer to you every single questions. And um, okay, um, I, 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 I pass the floor to you, but now I really would like just to say thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, as I say that uh, I can talk for hours about Oscar Wilde but um, thank you so much um, every single time I in contact with people and I try to to uh, explain myself or why I did this book because as I said I'm not an English literature major I'm an art historian so came from exactly for <laughs> for another uh, uh, part of, uh, of my life, my, I was really uh, enjoying uh, researching about Oscar Wilde. Because I, as you say, everybody is in, in the glutter, but some of us are starting uh, um, at the start. Grazie Renato, grazie mille Renato Miracolo for this presentation, for writing this book. Thank you Professor Benedetti, Professor Scatata for being uh, participating uh, in this uh, in this uh, panel, in this presentation. Uh, thank you everyone who is in the public and the audience uh, stay tuned uh, with uh, our next events. Uh, there is a calendar of events on our website. The format will depend from the pandemic. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned on the social medias and uh, our emails also for classes, our courses of Italian language and culture also for Italian natives. Oscar so, I will enjoy your courses. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you gave uh, uh, some uh, <laughs> some workshop for us, uh, some classes for us one day, uh, you can talk about uh, teach about art. Uh, we we do have uh, also art classes. Anyway, thank you. It was thank a you. pleasure. Thank you. To thank, you. thank you, Gina. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.